We're now looking at input and output. It's slightly difficult topic to cover because it's kind of a mix between practical and theory. In fact, a lot of these specification points are related to actually coding, uh, implementing validation, coding uh, outputs using Cartesian coordinates, uh, user interfaces, etc. And so uh, we can cover a lot of this, well, some of this stuff to an extent, but really a lot of it is mainly practical based and won't be in your exam you know how they examine you on some of these points but there are things uh, you can learn from this topic so don't worry uh, first thing we should really say is when we're talking about hardware IO devices so you often we say IO instead of just input output uh, devices they transfer data to and from a computer and a future topic will be all about hardware and input output that devices are naturally part of that and so we'll leave that for now but really in this context in this chapter we're talking about software and so inputs introduce data to a program and outputs transfer data to something outside of a program so I'm meaning this not massively literally as in we're talking about a screen or a file etc and so this is taken from the exam board specification uh, just the appendix of it and this is where they list their pseudocode only two points for the input output section um, and that's naturally the input and output so um, this is a bit like a print statement in languages and this is actually receiving inputs and it lists the type so like for the actual device and the data type so that's interesting so if you see that in your exam that's what that means so a bit more exam board pseudocode for you this time for file handling and a file is just a collection of data with a name usually stored on a computer and so there's two uh, statements written on the or listed on the pseudocode just reading and writing to files um, if we look at well this is me just trying to um, think of something that could come up in the exam usually when you use files as an input source you first open the file then you do what you are what you, you know the operations you need to do so appending something to it inserting something to it deleting something from the file and then afterwards you close the file and this is important because open files use up memory space and as soon as it's open they're more prone to corruption and therefore data loss unless they're closed immediately after they're needed so again like I say this is me just trying to think of what could come up in the exam one thing definitely could come up in the exam is validation and validation is ensuring the data the user inputs is sensible and usable so it's really important um, it doesn't necessarily check that the data is correct because how would a computer know if it's correct or not the user could have made a mistake or could be lying um, so it's really just checking that it's not going to cause an issue in the program and so when you write code you have some kind of understanding of what the user will be inputting at a later stage so for an example if we have a program that uses an input of someone's favorite number you expect them to input an integer you don't expect someone's favorite number to be like 13.2 you expect it to be a whole number usually and usually a positive number too but yeah so we're, we're classifying this input as an integer we're trying to convert it to an integer here and so when we don't input something that's an integer so we, inter uh, we input h which is a string we get an error and this is because it can't be converted it is an integer and so we get an error and so what we can do to validate this and ensure it doesn't cause an issue is something called exception handling and this isn't necessarily in your course and so this example is probably harder than it needs to be but really the point is one way to implement validation in code is via a while loop and so or yeah I mean while loop is indeterminate so it could essentially it just loops keeps looping until the input is usable until the input is valid so if first time here we make our mistake we enter g instead of an integer it's going to ask us to try again and this is what this code is doing it's breaking out of the loop if it's fine if it doesn't work it's just going to keep looping and essentially this means the code doesn't break that's really what exception handling is about and uh, the, the input is valid eventually um, but what you may have come across and this is I had a look at um, a couple of sort of revision websites so like BBC Bite Size uh, and other ones for computing and computer science and they talk about actually specific types of validation so I thought I should cover that to be on the safe side although to be fair this video is much more based on programming as in it's in the programming topic whereas these rules these types are for databases usually and there's not a massive amount of database theory in this course although there will be a topic a bit later on and so the first validation check is actually checking for the presence of data so it actually makes sure that data has actually been inputted as in if you sign up for a website they expect you to enter your username your email address but there may be certain fields that aren't mandatory and um, they wouldn't have a presence check 
associated with them. Uh, another one is a data type check, so pretty self-explanatory. It's a bit like the previous example, but like I say, this is much more applied to databases where it's much more structured. Um, and so this checks whether the data type is correct. Uh, a range check simply ensures that the data is within a set range. And the final one we're going to look at is length check, and this just simply checks for length. So for example, passwords often have to be of a minimum length, and usernames can't be too long because both situations might cause an issue uh, in the code. And there are of other checks listed on websites, but I think if you're going to have an exam question, this would be more than enough to get you some marks. So finally, for the last slide in this, we're talking about user interfaces. So I quite like this definition. Uh, it's calling the user interface for space where interactions between humans and machines occur. I'm pretty sure I got that from Wikipedia, although of course that might not be the original source. And so graphical user interfaces, GUIs or GUIs, allow interaction through graphical icons. So that's pretty much what we have now. But before that, we had textual user interfaces, and these allow interaction through solely command line interfaces, where essentially you just write lines of text, lines of code, and they issue commands to the computer. Uh, really because graphical came after the textual um, this name is only really given after GUIs were introduced and also the specification talks about Cartesian coordinates I thought we should briefly address just because they are just normal coordinates um, I until you start talking about circumstances where you're not talking about Cartesian so um, like parametrics in maths you don't necessarily know that coordinates are called Cartesian coordinates because there's not really another alternative until you do slightly higher maths. So you might not know what Cartesian coordinates are, you, that might be really obvious, I don't know. Um, but when we want to position something on the screen, we use Cartesian coordinates. So um, if it's 2D, we use just the X and Y axes, and when it's 3D, we use X, Y, and Z axes. And if you don't know what the 3D coordinate system looks like, uh, you have your normal 2D, X and Y, and then you have the Z axis too. So we're not going to go into massive amount of detail more because uh, it's, again, it's more practical based and it's probably something you haven't come across massively um, and so we're going to leave it there for that for this video. Um, again, it's a little bit of an awkward one to do because I'm only committing myself a little bit to cover this because most of it's practical based but the next one is slightly more straightforward and we're going to look at operators.